did a vote on what you guys wanted to see on my next community tab, and the votes on this one was quite a big amount. So today, we're going to be jumping back on Pokemon Shield, playing as the one and only blue, but with extra rules set in place to make things more interesting. Is it possible to beat this challenge? As always, I'm writing a script as I go along with the video, so let me know down below in the comments if you think I'm going to beat this or not. Hit the subscribe button, ding on that notification bell, and with that said, let's get gaming. Yes, I know this looks nothing like blue, but we'll get there. Mom, I'm leaving! We meet up with our rival Hop, as well as the unbeatable champion. But I know I will be the best trainer. Better than Red. What are these starters? Ew. I take out the trash for the time being and show Hop what a true Kanto trainer can do. Ah, my journey as a Galarian trainer is about to be... Oh, great. Well, I'm off on a wild goose chase to find and save Sean the sheep, but I managed to find something much better than that. All right, trash, use water gun. You're pathetic. I'm surprised the dog knocked me out and disappeared, but no bother. I'll just find it again. Uh, he wasn't real. Wait, really? Heartbroken, I venture into the region and arrive at the professor's house. From there, I received a Dynamax band, but hold your horses. That would just make things much easier. So, let's just use a watch instead. However, our journey truly begins. We grab a train to our first destination and hook it to the sponsor of today's video, Tokyo Tree and Sakurako. Tokyo Tree is a monthly box containing all of the latest sweets and treats only available in Japan. Bring in the Sakura culture to your own home, and if you guys are hunting for the most exquisite snacks from the local businesses, then you can check out the Sakurako box. You've seen me try and experience the different flavors before, so it's no surprise that I'm quite the fan. Every single month, I am craving for the Kit Kats. And this time, it's the chocolate orange. It just tastes like the chocolate orange at home, but in Kit Kat form. It even smells like orange as well. And then these are the brand new amazing melon wafers. Bon apple teeth. I think I missed all the melon, but it's still good. Every themed box comes with a cultural guidebook with every snack available in your monthly package, including all the ingredients, the allergies, but it also goes into the theme of the box, this month being the summer tropical Osaka snack station, Japan's capital for mouth-watering flavors. If you wanted a more tropical approach, then this month's fruity Sakurako box included the tea plate and green herbal tea my partner is using to cure a cold is the one for you. Ah, oh, <laughs> Don't burn yourself. Who just so happened to give it to me. And that's not all because you could claim some amazing Pokemon prizes and some free boxes by entering the photo contest by using their hashtags via social media. Use my link, Ball Ryan, for $5 off your first order, but make sure you order before the 15th of June to receive this month's box. However, our train gets put to a halt to, yes, you guessed it, more sheep. However, this is perfect for me because I can go into the wild area and catch our first squad member, Rory the Growlithe, and I can also catch him a chop. Okay, maybe another time. Eventually, we arrive in Motorstoke, where we sign up for the gym challenge. I choose the number 11 because, quite simply, it's Blue's age in the first generation of Pokemon. With that out of the way, we unlock the flying taxi ability, so from there, we can take a step back towards Wedgehurst, and we're forced to catch this Slowpoke, who is now called Garbage, and we instantly release him. No room on the squad for you. What was really infuriating, however, was trying to catch our second squad member, Abra, because not only does it need to have the synchronized ability and be male, but I have to catch it with one ball. Otherwise, it teleports away. I kid you not, I spent about two hours trying to catch this one magician, but we managed to catch it, eventually calling it Harry Potter. I'm not a fucking wizard! We arrive at the dojo, but instead of doing the tasks and gaining the AXP charm, which can and has ruined my runs before, I decided to trade my trash for my ace, Squirtle, called Cooper. We can catch a few more Pokemon, but we need to level up and gain some badges first. But at least I found a Firestone super early into the run, so I evolved Rory to Arcanine. I reckon you need training. <laughs> Oh, no. 
Well, we beat up Hop, and we're finally making progress compared to what I was having to endure. And after beating up Postman Pat and evolving to War Turtle, my team is starting to come together. Also, I tried to make Blue, but this was the best I can do for now. Oh, the chairman chose me, so I'm more amazing. Kid, do you know who I am? I'm one of the best trainers of Kanto. Solosis is up first against Rory, and we hit a huge bite, though Endeavor returns to sender. We managed to take it down, so next up is Gothita. Again, bite hits hard, but falls short, so it gets an easy finish. I then sent out Cooper and get my revenge on one simple bite, leaving only Hatena. I have to switch to Water Pulse as it resists bite, but we eventually take it down. Ah, oh, whatever, I've got all the wishing stars here anyways. I don't even know what you're going on about. With Bead walking out, we press on, exit the cave, and before we take on our first gym, we're able to get one more encounter here, and that being a female Eevee. Now its evolution can go either way because blue can have any, depending on the battles red and blue had in Pokemon Yellow. But blue uses Jolteon if red beats him in battles 2 and 3, and doesn't clash. So I go for the nickname Supaku, Japanese for Spark. Watch out! Oh my god! Hey man, that's not cool. Our first gym challenge is actually quite simple, to become a farmer. However, this isn't really my forte. Eventually, we get to take on Milo. He has two Pokemon, which means I can only use two as well. He starts with Gossifleur, and Harry Potter is out first. Our Spoon taking it down. This leaves only his Elagos, who may seem weak, but once Dynamax, it is able to resist. We do get the confusion from Psybeam, but it fights through and we fall. We only have our Rory to deal big damage, but thanks to the evolution from before, we have access to some crazy moves. Flare Bits being one, and we deal major damage. It also hurts itself in confusion, so we are clear to take the flower down to another Flare Blitz. And with us being slightly underleveled as well, that was one good fight. With one match down, we're off to our next stop. I decide to head back to the wild area to pick up an item that is going to really help with the next gym, and evolves to Paku to Jolteon. This gives us a huge stat boost in speed and special attack. And whilst we're here, I go back for my Machop and being very uninspiring, I call it KSI. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hand the bike over, you gimp. Not if I get to it first. We give him a little bit of karate as well as booting hop off the bridge and arrive at Hull Bridge while we're next gym challenge. This one being a water maze. Once we cleared the path, we're able to take Nessa on. So, Mr. Famous, I've heard so much about you. Oh, so you like what you see, eh? She starts with Goldeen against Suhaku, and we start to sweep with a couple of jolts taking down her fish, and her Aracuda follows. This leaves only her Dreadnought. However, once it sets the rain, Swift Swim is active, so I set a couple of charms to reduce its attack and waste the Dynamax turns. Once we fall to Razor Shell, KSI is up next and get revenge, taking it down with low sweep. With the turtle down, we won our next badge. Now am I good for you? Oh, I see how it is. Do not keep the chairman waiting. Oh, wow. So you're controlling an 11 year old child you've never even met before. That's cool. We enjoyed the cooked Pokemon we defeated against Nessa before meeting back up with Hop. The next gym leader isn't to be seen, so we're off on another quest. Quest? I'm already on a quest. I don't have time to deal with weaklings. You're going to regret saying that. Bead and his fairies were easy to take care of, alongside with taking care of Team Yell, disturbing a car call from doing their work. Eventually, we do find the leader, Kabu, who specializes in fire types, but with only one good Pokemon as well as a fire type ourselves, I think we're going to need some more firepower. And it just so happens to be another member of our squad. However, I have a different Pokemon in mind instead of Rhydon. As Leon already used a Rhyperia, this could go two different ways. We can either go Sand Shrew like he used in yellow, or we can go for the Generation 1 and 3 mention capture, Cubone, and get creative. I've heard the state input to the team. I catch a Sand Shrew called Sandy Cheeks before heading to bed. Got some fight in you, eh? I mean, it comes at a cost. Wink, wink. Disgusting! Marnie starts with Krogunk, and an easy bulldoze leaves it hanging on the brink of death. We take the revenge and knock it out with another bulldoze. Next was Scraggy, so I switch over to Rory and take it down with Play Rough. But more Peko flinches every single time. I don't even manage to lay a paw on it. This is embarrassing. On the next attempt, however, I opt for Extreme Speed instead, to avoid that from happening. 
and this time we get the win. Sandy also evolved to Sand Slash. We're ready for the next morning to take on Kabu, and not only is Jim is a catching challenge, but there is another squad member we can pick up, another yellow encounter, Vulpix. I call her Vulpine and pass the gym test. Kabu is a menace with his burning passions and sent out his Ninetales first against my Rory. I wanted this so he doesn't use Will-O-Wisp and slowly take it down with extreme speed and crunch. His Arcanine is out next and intimidates, but I can then switch to Sandy to eat a bite, then get a free switch as it tries to burn us. More crunching and extreme speeds later take it down, leaving only his Gigantamax Center Scorch. I hit first with my priority move before finally falling to Max Flutterby. Sandy Cheeks is up next and we take another big hit as we lower its speed with Bulldoze. We chip again but finally fall. But with all the Dynamax turns over, Cooper can safely come out and finish the centipede off with one strong water pulse. A nice simple badge added to my collection. Hustle hustle you can do it Blue! I know I can but that doesn't mean you can be so cringy about it. Bruh, cheer. We continue through the wild area, KSI evolves into Machoke, finding another Firestone for Vulpines will evolve to Ninetales before arriving in Hammerlock. Oh, Holt won't be coming, it's only natural. Pfft, whatever, I don't even care. Oh yes, that seems like the perfect plan to become the very best. After having another go at the hairstyle, Nex was heading over to the ghost type gym based in Stow on side. Hop's waiting for another battle to get over his loss, and well, it was an easy sweep in all honesty. However, I'm quite on the level for the gym, so I decide to catch some more encounters, such as Cubone from before called Sans, though I can't use it, the one and only Tish, who evolves to Gyarados, and a shelter named Pearl, a Waterstone evolving it to Cloyster. With a few more levels down our belts, I chose my four-man squad against Alistair's ghosts. I'm still on the level, so I'm a bit nervous. Yamask is up first against Cooper, and being a ground type, Water Pulse does major damage. However, it falls short and Water Pulse gets disabled, but a single bite finishes it off. Next was Mimikyu, and we can take out the disguise. I stay in and chip with bite as it sets up with home claws until we can use our stab again. A critical hit takes it down. Cursula was next and curses us. One more water pulse just falls short, so we go down to a hex. I then send out Sandy, who can finish off the ghost with Poison Jam, leaving only Gengar. However, its Gigantamax form is scary and quick as well. It outspeeds and takes down Sandy and one, and even though Vulpine chips with extra sensory, we also fall in two, leaving only Harry Potter. The Dynamax turns end, and we're luckily quick enough to go first. One side shock was just enough to finish off the ghost. That was extremely close, but with four badges down, we're halfway there. Oh, I'm sure that's just miners. Surprisingly, it wasn't. It was one big elephant. Oh my. Yeah, I know, my hair is so much better. We sweep his team with ease and give Bead the booking. And with the mysteries of Galar's history unraveled, we're off to Balon Lee and through the magical forest. On top of that, Cooper evolved to the King of Water Coopers with guns. We arrive at the gym, or should I say a theatre? The challenge is to put on a show for Opal, who is looking for new talent. But I don't think a cocky kid like myself is best suited for this. Why do you think I know what you eat for breakfast every morning? With that out of the way, we're able to face Opal. She starts with her Galarian wheezing, and Flash Cannon leaves it on the brink of death, a second one taking it out. Her Marwile is next, and her intimidation means nothing to me. I switch over to Vulpine, who can eat a crunch and knock it out with a single flamethrower. Next was Tojikis, and once again, I switch out to Sapaku and take the Ancient Power, followed by hitting one big Thunderbolt. A second one takes it down, leaving only Alcremie, which Gigantamaxes into one big wedding cake. Oh, easy, 88. What, you can't trick me? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the battle consists of questions that indicate stat boosts or drops. In this battle, we constantly switch, so we lose the stat changes. Cooper is back out and takes it down with a further flash cannon, winning us yet another badge. Oh, you failed my test. Just give me my badge, Grandma. I hate pink anyways. Uh, uh, hold on, dear. Oh, do I have to? I return back to Hammerlock to mock Bead in his face. Whip. Gotta love wasting time. We do bump back into Hop and take him down once again, and as per usual, we swept his team. You are blind for a flying taxi driver. 
It does start to get a little cold once we arrive in Surchester, home of the ice type gym, but we can also get some good shoes here too. But still, nothing resembles Blue's boots. On the plus side, at least I found another encounter while level grinding, and did I seriously autopilot and not catch it? However, I managed to get a few good TRs to use further down the line before taking on the gym challenge. Pfft, how hard can this be? My cockiness is getting to me. But it seems the leader is even more cocky than I when I come to face her. I send out Volpine first against Frostmoth, a quad effective flamethrower takes them off down in one. But up next is Darmanitan, and he's more bulky, but thankfully he also falls to one flame. Ice Q is next, and even though the hail is set, we take it down in two. So all that remains is her Lapras, who Gigantamaxes, and even though we get to chip with Energy Ball, we fall to a big Max Geyser. So Baku is next, to not only hit hard, but to outspeed before Aurora Veil kicks in. This is where my team will start to struggle. Once Supaku falls, KSI is out when the Dynamax turns end. And one low sweep is just enough to take down the dinosaur. A little rocky at the end, but still easy. But that's what you get when you are cocky. Before we move on any further, we need to address our two squad members. Harry Potter and KSI. They need to be evolved via trading, and thankfully we can do that with the wonderful community on the Discord server. Which, if you haven't joined already, you can get involved in trades, battles, and teaming up against raid battles with other like-minded trainers. The link is down in the description. Thanks to my good friend Steven, Harry Potter was able to evolve to Alakazam and KSI into Machamp. Oh my god, what is that sprite? What's this? I say a fantastic looking poster. You're honestly pathetic. Hop gets beaten once again, and we're off down south to Spikemouth to take on our next gym leader, Piers. The problem is, it's shut. Although Marnie lets us in. Oh my god, Blue, now's your chance. Say, you don't see Piers in a gig. Uh, he's my brother, mate. Of course he is. We get rejected as per usual, but at least we get to teach her mouse some manners. The town is stupid weird as there is no sunlight to be seen, but at least we get face to face with the mental artist himself. This battle doesn't include any Dynamaxing, so it's back to basic roots. Piers starts with Scrafty, and Harry Potter is up first. A quad effective Dazzling Gleam gives us a swift lead. Next was Malamar, and we do decent damage, but a critical Night Slash puts a halt in my plans. Sandy is next to hit a quad effective Fury Cutter, which takes it down. He sends out his ace, Obstagoon, and we get a free switch as it tries to counter us. And KSI delivers us a powerful Brick Break, leaving only a Scum Tank. It screeches us after switching back to Sandy, followed by eating a big sucker punch. We hit hard with Dig, but we're going down after another one. So instead, I switch to Sapaku and finish off the skunk with one big thunderbolt. This gives us another badge quite easily. Come quick, danger! Oh, do I have to? We follow Leon back towards Hammerlock and take on our final gym challenge against Raihin. He specializes in dragon types, but also doubles using weather Pokemon to support. So after carefully deciding on my team, we're ready to go. He starts with Gigalith and Flygon against my Koopa and Harry Potter. Harry hits them both with Dazzle and Gleam, and we manage to get the burn from a Scald on the Gigalith. Though it needs an icy wind and barely holds on with the burn, but the dragon falls. This is perfect because both of his supports are out, with both my team ganging up against Sandaconda and The Rock finally falling. This leaves a 2v1 against Duraludon, a Gigantamax is into the big house, but even taking a big G Max depletion, Skull and Shadow Balls were enough to knock him down. We just secured our 8th badge quite easily, and even with the gym challenge over, we're off to face the league. I mean, that's a happy geezer if I've ever seen one. Ooh la la, Professor Sonia! We jump on the train and get through rough climates to finally arrive in the city of Winden, where the league takes place. But there's a couple of things we need first. First and foremost, a better bag. Second, we need to finish our movesets for our squad. So Paco learns Shadow Ball and Koopa learns Ice Beam, alongside with purchasing Ice Punch for KSI. With that said, we're done. We're ready to rock and roll. Marnie is our first opponent and starts with her cat against KSI, and we get a swift and early lead with Brick Break. Scrafty is next, so I make the switch to Harry Potter, scary face slowing us down, but we still outspeed. A quad effective Dazzling Gleam takes it down. Toxicroak is next and lands a huge sucker punch, 
but we retaliate with Psychic. More Pego is next, and expect him by I switch back to KSI to eat it with ease. Again, we knock it out, leaving only her Gigantamax, Grimmsnarl. I stay in this time around to waste the turns, taking us out. However, Sandy Cheeks can outspeed and hit hard with Poison Jab, a second one winning us the match. Next was our rival, Hop, using his similar team as usual and starts with his Sheep. Once again, KSI is up first and we eat a big Zen headbutt, but one brick break takes it out. Corviknight is next and I make the switch to Sapaku, who can eat a Drill Peck easily followed by hitting hard with Thunderbolt, leaving it on the brink of death. Hop heals and the second one still isn't enough. But the third time is the charm and we rest his wings. I stay in against Snorlax, so I can set with charm before taking a big horsepower. We survive and manage to paralyze with Thunderbolt, and the big bear is fully immobilized twice. And it's still not enough! We fall, but KSI is able to finish with Brick Break, and also knocks out Pinchurchin with a huge high horsepower. This leaves only his rabbit, who Dynamaxes and takes down the champ with Airstream followed by outspeed and Sandy with Max Flare. We go on the ground and hit hard with Dig and finish its Dynamax turns before switching to Cooper to eat the Pyro Ball and hit hard with Scald, taking it down. With that, we're victorious in the semi-finals. That pose is still cringe. Okay, I'll just get us food. Six and a half hours later. That's it. I'm not waiting. I'm finding huge imposter vibes with the Marco Cosmos and infiltrate their tower to help Hop reach to his brother, alongside with Team Yell. Eventually, we arrive at the top to take on the delusional woman. Frostlass is up first against Vulpine, a flamethrower giving us a swift lead. Malotic is next, and I stay in to attempt to reduce its special defense with Energy Ball, but even so, it knows recover. With no luck, even after a crit, we do fall to a big surf. Sapaku does finish it off, however, and out comes Salazzle, so we've switched to Cooper. It poisoned us with Poison Gas, and I set up with Shell Smash to be able to outspeed, and also hit hard. Salazzle being an Oko, as well as a huge Ice Beam against Serena, this leaves only her garbage bag who Gigantamaxes. With Poison Damage doing enough to activate Torrent, and one huge Scald, just falls short. We go down to Max Quake, but Sandy is up next, and we dig, which finishes off Oleana. Leon! Where's my Chinese man? Well, I'm sorry, I was enjoying watching you cook that girl's team. The next morning is fight day, competing for the top spot against Leon, but we get interrupted when the silly geezer is back once again. In hot pink? Shut up! That grandma ruined my masculinity! Beast starts with Morwile against Vulpine. One flamethrower is an easy knockout. God of War is next, and we managed to chip with a couple more flames. Ugh. At this point, I'm wasting time. So I try to switch, but even Sandy couldn't survive a psychic. Harry is out to hit as hard as possible with Shadow Balls, leaving it on the red as we fall to Dazzling Gleam. Sapaku retaliates and takes out the Big Fairy, and is up against Rapidash next. Once again, Shadow Ball does huge damage. We tank the Psycho Cut and put the Unicorn to rest. As Hatterini is all that's left at Gigantamaxis and does finish us off with Max Starfall, but Cooper eats another Mindstorm and manages to take down the Fairy Wizard. Our first real challenge is against the water type Queen Nessa. Golisopod is up first, and I start with Cooper. I go for Shell Smash after first impressions to set my special attack and speed, and manage to secure the burn. Emergency exit kicks in, and she switches to Seeking. So I smash my shell once again as Aquawing is placed in the field. Scald hitting hard. We eat a huge Mega Horn and Torrent activates, meaning we can take it down. But Golisopod does manage to finish off our weakened turtle. However, Sapaku is next and is able to sweep her entire roster, leaving her Dreadnought, which, unlike the gym, can now Gigantamax. And it surprisingly goes for Max Darkness, meaning we're able to get two huge Thunderbolts in and take down her turtle. That was one easy fight. Our next opponent was Alistair, Harry Potter starting off against Dusk Noir. It's incredibly bulky and can hit hard, so I start with Reflect to boost our physical defense before hitting hard with Sidekick. However, Chandelier gets a huge critical hit and takes us down. Cooper retaliates with Scald and we Shell Smash when Poltergeist is up and protects itself. With that, we now outspeed and once again fall short to taking the teapot down. Expecting a full restore, I shell smash again before being able to sweep, taking the teapot down as well as Cursler. 
Getting our Gigantum Actus, but thanks to our setting up, we're able to outspeed and knock down the Ghost in one, giving us yet another nightmareless fight. Is that even a word? Our final opponent is Raihan and his Dragon types. Although that's not a dragon. Sandia is up first against Torkoal and tries to make us yawn when we go for a critical dig. Barely holding on after a solar beam, we hit hard but a second one takes us down. However, this is perfect because KSI can come out and finish the Tortoise off with high horsepower and set up focus energy when Turtonator comes back out. It sets up the sun again and annoyingly we did not get the crit. So KSI is down. This isn't good. Harry is next and sets up the reflect, followed by hitting hard with sidekick, just barely taking it out. Flygon is next, and with Reflect up, we can last longer in the field. It goes for Sandstorm, however, meaning we can quickly knock it out. Gujra is next, and is much more bulky. Plus, we survive a critical thunder, and we're lucky to take it out, leaving only Duralodon. Once again, I set up another Reflect before going down the max Rockfall, followed by setting charms with Sapaku until the Dynamax turns are over. From there, we can safely take it down with a couple of Shadow Balls, meaning we are the winner for the finals. All that remains is the champion of Gala. Ah! What the heck? Leon, you didn't give me any food last night. With everyone evacuated, I need to punch that guy's face in for ruining my opportunity. Or maybe I can use this. You must understand, I'm not doing anything terrible. You're just wanting money and... <laughs> Escavalier is up first against Volpine, and a quad effective flamethrower gives us an easy knockout. Next was Kling Clang, and although it is more bulky, we take a wild charge and it falls. Ferroform gets given the exact same treatment and goes down to big flames, as well as Berserker. This leaves only Rose's Copperaja, the same one that Bead nicked earlier on, though Gigantamax is. We do good damage, but we eventually fall to Max Quake. Sandy is up next, and we quickly dig on the ground. We eat a huge Max Mindstorm before it reverts back to normal, a second dig being enough to take it down. Although Rose isn't the one I need to worry about, it's Eternatus, the darkest day. Although if I can use this against Red's Mewtwo, I could reclaim title the best of the best. Oh my god, the doggies are real! With the help of Zacian's Behemoth Blade and Zamazenta's Behemoth Bash, we catch the big man-made dragon who could come to my aid for the future. But for now, I have one thing left to do. To go against the big bad Galar champion himself, Leon. This is the final battle in the run, so last chance is to put your guesses in the comments on whether you think I can beat this challenge. Aegis Slash is first against Harry Potter, and I set up a quick reflect as it tries to protect himself. Shadow Wall puts us to the brink of death, but we just barely hold on and return to Sender, taking it down. Rhyperia is next, and we do decent damage with Sidekick, but Mega Horn connects and finishes us off. Cooper is out and hits one big scold. Next was Dragapult, and this is perfect because I can switch freely to Sapaku as it tries a Thunderbolt. One critical Shadow Ball falls short so he heals, but two more gets the knockout. Haxorus comes out and we switch back to Cooper to tank the Earthquake, followed by Outrage. But we outspeed after Shell Smash and we're in a position to finally start sweeping. Ice Beam taking care of the Dragon as well as his Monkey, leaving only his Charizard. This definitely feels like Generation what? Okay, maybe not. We hit one Scald and... <laughs> we managed to Oko his massive lizard and become king of the Galar region. I thank you all very much for watching. If you did, make sure you leave a like, hit the subscribe button and ding on the notification bell so you all know when I'm uploading next. Also, a quick reminder to check out the sponsor of today's video, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. But with that said, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.